crossroads of the Americas is the setting for a conference of 18 Western Hemisphere presidents. President Eisenhower, still convalescing, flies in to attend the two-day meeting. He is greeted by President Arias of the host nation and a full turnout of the diplomatic corps. As president of the largest and richest nation in the organization of American states, Ike is looked to to set the tenor of the meeting. Conducted informally, the meetings re-emphasized hemisphere unity in a time of increasing world tension, culminating in a five-point declaration of common principles and highlighted by President Eisenhower's proposal of an inter-American atomic development plan. Informality was followed by a ceremony befitting the presence of 14 chiefs of state and four presidents-elect, as Panama fulfilled its role as host by conferring the decoration of the order of Manuel Amador Guerrero on each of the guests. It was a mission of two-level diplomacy for Ike, weaving closer ties of friendship with our good neighbors and soundly rebuffing red propaganda slurs by his presence despite his recent illness. rigorous test of America's civil defenses is coordinated from this Washington nerve center, a simulated hydrogen bomb attack that strikes at 75 key targets from coast to coast. Here every phase is followed as if the attack were real. Heading south, southwest. Speed 350 knots. Number aircraft unknown. Over. The warning is flashed along the civil defense network, yellow alert, then red alert, attack imminent and in every target city, preparedness gets as concrete a test as possible, short of actual bombing. In the cities, police and civil defense teams clear the streets. Meanwhile, from the Pentagon and other key points, top defense figures are airlifted to secret control centers from where they would direct America's defense and counterattack. thousand federal employees were evacuated from the nation's capital. It was only the beginning of a five-day study, a searching scrutiny of how America would fare. It was estimated over four million would have died in New York City. No estimates were given for the rest of the country. But the grim arithmetic took on new impact for all who took part in Operation Alert. American Sabre jets arrive in Japan for transfer to that nation's small defense force, a major boost in effectiveness for the Nippon Air Force and the beginning of a possibly significant realignment of strength in the Orient. The plane's protective cocoons are stripped and the airframes thoroughly overhauled by United States airmen and Japanese technicians working side by side in preparation for the first flight of these first line warbirds. Pilots trained by the United States 5th Air Force for the transition from propeller craft are briefed for the flight that catapults Japan into the jet age. The nucleus of a technically modern air force, its future yet to be decided in a major political debate now shaping up in Tokyo. Pilots, some of whom fought against Americans, now fly as allies. Seventeen of the world's most beautiful girls share the spotlight at Long Beach Municipal Auditorium where the winner of the coveted title of Miss Universe is to be chosen. From Argentina through Venezuela, from Iceland through Ecuador, there's a truly international array of beauty here, vying for fame in the fifth annual Miss Universe competition. Brunette, blonde, redhead, fair skin, dark, everyone a worthy claimant of the title that carries with it a fabulous list of prizes, including a one-year movie contract. Miss USA, Carol Morris, is the chosen one. The second time in the history of the contest an American girl has won. Last year's winner, Helleby Rombin of Sweden, crowns Miss Universe 1957. The daughter of an Iowa minister, a Drake University swimming champion, Dark brown hair, blue eyes, proportions 36, 25, 36, and 5 feet 7 inches tall. She stands on the threshold of fame and fortune.
Something new in Motormania debuts at Soldier's Field. This fearless foursome is the Citrix Group, famous in Britain but appearing here for the first time. There's a lot of, you might say, reverse English to their stunts. Notice that the hands almost never touch the handlebars. They take four men to do the hard way what one can do with ease. Hard? It's hair raising. But they're tops for new and interesting ways of riding a motorcycle. Assuming you want to ride one at all, you might want to stand instead. He'll take the low road. Riding high for the rest of the show are the Transworld Auto Daredevils, all of whom returned alive from a 76-city tour of Europe doing just this. Talk about hot rods. That car was new. Here's what they do to the old ones. How to grow old gracefully. Just take a flyer in the stock car business. Leaping lizards. 